or a life ministries come out of the world. Messiah people seek the truth. Hello, everybody. This is Paul Neeson with Torah Life Ministries. I have a local Christian radio station here in South Florida. And each week I get on uh, and do a program for this station. And here's my message this week. Just to call on Christians to repent and understand the truth between righteousness and wickedness. Please put your comments and questions below the video. And if you know somebody uh, who is a Christian who is not living and walking the way of Messiah, please send this video out to them. And if you are one of those people that received this video, have an open heart, listen to this, and put your comments and questions below the video. Thank you, and here we go. Hello, everybody. This is Paul Neeson from Torah Life Ministries. Thank you for listening to the program today. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to hear this important message. And I've been on this radio station now for over a year, and people are starting to get it. I have a local fellowship in South Florida that people are, after hearing this message, coming to join. And eyes are being opened. Ears are hearing things that they missed before. And I've met a Christians that have read the Bible over and over again, and they've missed these things. They haven't seen the things that I'm explaining in the teachings here. And when I asked these people, well, what finally did it? Was it something I said? Because it's not about me. It's about, it's about our Creator and His Word. What finally opened up their eyes? And uh, many of them often say, well, it just wasn't the timing for them to see these things that are so clear. But now the time is right. Well, the Bible says clearly that there are some things that are hidden from us and some things that are revealed to us for our for our growth. And those things that are revealed to us are the things that we should know. But what happens is, as humans, we work so hard to find the secret things that we tend to miss the things that are right in front of us. And there is something in the scriptures right in front of us that is so clear in the scriptures, but so many Christians miss it. And a big part of that is because many of the Christians that are missing it are the Christians that are teaching other Christians, the pastors, the evangelists. And they're teaching them what I would have to say is a false gospel. Because the gospel is more than just accepting with your lips that you accept Yeshua, the one they call Jesus, as your Messiah. Folks, it doesn't end there. The road is supposed to begin there. That's what we have to understand. You can't just say that and think, well, now my life is going to be great because, because Yeshua, the one they call Jesus, is my Messiah. No, that's where the persecution and, 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 and the, the tough road begins. The scriptures say that the yoke that Yeshua gives us will not be burdensome. And the yoke that the Pharisees and the sages were giving in the original covenant was very burdensome. And that's what our Messiah Yeshua, the one they called Jesus, came to do away with. And that's why he had such a problem with them. Because he was explaining, he didn't say, do not keep the Sabbath. He said, you Pharisees, you sages are telling people to keep it this way. Well, I am telling people it is not that difficult. It is not hard. And this is the way it should be done. And, and then he goes on and he explains through example and through physical example how to keep the Sabbath or keep the fourth commandment. And he goes through all the commandments, how to love our creator, how to have no other idols before us, how to uh, be loving to our neighbor. He gives all of these examples. And some people say that Yeshua didn't even uh, lessen the bar. He hired the bar. For example, of adultery, he says to even think about adultery uh, would be a sin, not even only to commit the act. But I will say he didn't make it harder. He made it easier because he, he explained and showed us by principle a way to live our lives as uh, professing uh, Christians or believers uh, the, the idea we should have. So it shouldn't even be going there. I mean, there, there, there's he t his words and his principle takes away the whole idea of us even looking at another woman and, and, and having thoughts of, uh, of adultery or, or, or any of these things or, or sexual desires or things like this. It just takes it away. It's like, you know, some people said, say, well, the, the set apart Spirit takes away sin. No, it doesn't. It takes away the desire to sin. Do you understand the difference? And Yeshua, uh, by telling us the lifestyle we need to live according to Torah, uh, along with the set-apart spirit, will take away the desire uh, to do wicked things, to do things that go against our Creator's guidelines and instructions. We start looking at the morality of our Creator's ideas and not the world's ideas. Because we can all agree 
uh, the reality of our creator, uh, of the world's ideas, have dropped so much from what the scriptures uh, say is moral and righteous and, and, and so on. The world's ideas continue to drop and the standards continue to drop where now you even have the, the average church saying abortion and homosexuality are okay and, and eating unclean foods are okay and every single thing our creator calls an abomination is okay. And it's not political correctness. No, it's a drop in morality of the church. That's what it is. If we were true believers and we put our action and our fruit showed, we would, we, would, we would detest those things. And we would love the things that our Creator loves, and that's righteousness. And that's the way we should be living as Christians and as believers. But that's not what's happening today. Because uh, as uh, people that are just doing lip service, we care more about what our fellow friend thinks or our man thinks than what our Creator thinks. And we fear the government more than we fear our Creator. And the scriptures are very clear of the warnings that are going to happen to us if we continue to, to go on this path. And the path of, of righteousness and the path of following uh, the way of Yeshua, the way. It's not about a label. It's not about being a Christian. It's not about being a believer. It's about the way. There's a way to live and a way not to live. That's it. All these titles and all these denominations and everything else is just putting people in a box. Well, this is what I'm supposed to believe because uh, I'm Pentecost or I'm Baptist or I'm something else. No, there's one way and, and it's not only the way to salvation is the blood of Yeshua because yes, that is the only way to salvation, but there's also one way to live and that is according to the Bible, according to the words of scripture. And if you get away from that, you are not going to get the results that he desires for us. And he says I, you know, in Ezekiel 33, 11, you know, that, you know, he wants the wicked to change their ways so they can live. He says, I take no pleasure in the death of wicked people. I only wish they would change their ways so they can have life. Now, many Christians listen to this will say, well, we're not wicked. Uh, you know, or I'm not wicked. And I will tell you that Christianity today is teaching a system that goes against the Bible. It goes against the way of Yeshua. And, and if you're following that way, uh, the Bible calls that sin and wickedness. And we have to, to come to the to reality that we're, why aren't we following the guidelines and instructions of our Creator? Why aren't we keeping the, the commandments of our Creator? Does the Bible say they're done away with or does the Bible say that they're forever? How come we're not keeping the the, the, the set-apart appointments that in the scriptures say throughout all your generations. How do we mistranslate, do this and don't do that? Well, that's what happens. And when the churches out there today say, well, you know, we could eat anything because all foods are clean. Yes, all foods are clean, but what our Creator called an abomination is not food. So if you're out there and you're a Christian... And, and, and you, you think you're, you're living a righteous life because you said a couple of words, but you're out there eating pork, uh, working on a Saturday or working on a Sabbath and, and, and doing things like this. That's not righteousness according to our creator. And it's not my words that are here to condemn you. It's the words of scripture that are here to make you repent. And when, this, when, when our creator said, you know, and shows us through the example, when we accept him, we need to do something first. And if you did not do this first, whether in your actions or in your words, you need to go back and do it. He didn't just say, accept me and you shall have salvation. He said, repent. Repentance always came before acceptance. Repent. And repent means to change your ways, to change your, your desires. Now, your ways should, should be a way to follow him and it's a heart that needs to change. And our hearts should desire to follow our Creator's ways. And yes, just because we're not perfect is not an excuse to be imperfect. We have to continually work at it. And, and, and His mercy and grace are for that who, those who desire to follow His way. And if we mess up, we got His mercy and His grace. But if we purposely say, well, we don't have to do that because, and we make excuses and all these things, we're going to end up getting the result that the Scriptures say is going to happen to those that aren't following the way. And when Yeshua says, get away from me, I did not know you. Do you want him to know you folks? Well, we could take the scripture and see what scripture says and over and over again it talks about. If you love me, 
you will keep my guidelines and instructions. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And his commandments are not just picking and choosing. And, and his ideas and instructions are not according to the morality of this world. It's the morality of the scriptures. So I want to turn uh, to Malachi and, and to just talk about the coming day of judgment a little uh, in Malachi and, to, and just give you a verse of what this says and just explain uh, why so many people are, are, are running into an issue today. And I have several different translations. But one of my translations says in Malachi chapter 4, verse 4 says, Remember the Torah of my servant Moses, which I commanded him in Harab for all Israel, the status and judgments. Okay, this verse here proves that the guidelines and instructions of our Creator were never to be done away with. That we were to remember it all times. But we hear these words in this translation and we think, well, Torah is for Jewish people, which it's not. The Torah is the foundation of all scripture. It's the first five books in the Bible, starting in Genesis. And uh, most Christians don't even read uh, the first five books of the Bible. Uh, but this is the foundation of all scripture. And then they say in this translation, it's for all Israel. And a lot of Christians will say, well, I'm not Israel, so I don't have to do those things. This just shows the, 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 the lack of understanding of scripture that's being taught out there today. And in Hosea, it says, my people are destroyed for lack of understanding. Because they have uh, forgotten the guidelines and instructions of our Creator, because they have rejected it, not only will they suffer, but their seed will suffer. So we need to understand Israel is not only the, 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 the people that were born of the 12 tribes of Israel. Israel is everyone who accepts Yeshua, the one they call Jesus, as Messiah. And if you are a Christian, you are Israel. Or at least you're supposed to be. If you're not following the system of Christianity, and if you desire to follow the way of Yeshua, the way of uh, of the Messiah, the way of Yeshua, the one they call Jesus, then you now become Israel. And we take, for example, the children in Exodus. When the children were uh, of the Exodus, the children in Egypt, when they were in Egypt, so you had all the, all of the children of Israel in Egypt. But then when they came out of Egypt, many of the people of Egypt came with them, and they were told now they have to live as the children of Israel. They have to follow the ways. They have to keep the guidelines and instructions the same way. And if they don't, they're out of the camp. And this is this is Camp Yeshua, folks. This is the camp of, of Yeshua, the one they call Jesus. You either follow his way or you're out. And, you know, and he gives us chances. He gives us opportunities. And he has patience with us. But time is running out. We need to get this right. We can't keep purposely living against his guidelines and instructions and think we're not going to suffer the consequences of it and think we're going to continually be allowed back in the camp. No, Scripture does not say that. So we go to Malachi uh, verse 4, uh, 4, 4 or, uh, or chapter 4, verse 4, and, and what it says here in, and this is another translation, it says, Remember to obey the law of Mo Moses, my servant. And that's great, because when the other translation says the Torah, well, Torah, that's what it means, the guidelines and instructions. Now, when we hear law, it's a very poor mistranslation of what the Bible is really saying. It's, it's guidelines and instructions. So remember. So um, here's Malachi reminding everybody uh, to remember to keep the guidelines and instructions, the law, the Torah, the, 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 the words that, that so many prophets came over and over again to give. Uh, to the people, not to forget them, to remember. Remember means not forget. And you can only forget something you once knew or something you read or something you were told. And you're listening to this right now, you're being told this. Don't forget this message. It's what the scriptures are saying. It's not about me and my opinion. It says, uh, it says in, in, in this verse, remember to obey the law of Moses, my servant. Now, here's a problem we have. As many Christians think it's a mosaic law or mosaic covenant no moses was a messenger moses didn't sit down one day and said this is what i think that the, the children of israel need to do no it wasn't like that what it was was moses hearing from our creator and telling the people what he said now some people say well why didn't our creator tell the people directly well he wanted to but the people pleaded with moses please we're in such fear uh, of hearing him Please, let him tell you, and then you tell us. Moses was a messenger, folks, and he gave us this great message directly from our Creator and how to live 
and what to do. And that's known as the Torah. And Yeshua, the one they called Jesus, is known as the living Torah. He's, he set through an example, through his actions, of the guidelines and instructions, often mistaken as the law, put into action. And what he came to rebuke was not keeping the Torah or following the commandments. What he came to rebuke was the Pharisees and sages that were adding to the guidelines and instructions of our Creator. The word says, do not add or take away, but keep them. Now we have Christianity today taking away from them, telling people we don't have to do those things. Those things weren't for our time. Well, if we continue to with the scripture in Malachi, remember to obey the law of Moses, my servant. All the decrees and regulations that I have gave, given him on Mount Sinai for all Israel. So it doesn't say some. It says all of the regulations and statutes and creeds that I've given him. Not few, but, but all of them. When the children went into the promised land, they were told if they follow the guidelines and instructions and they obey what our Creator, what our creator says, they will be blessed abundantly. But if they do not, they will, will, will have new diseases put on them that they never even heard of before. You see, in Exodus 15, 26, it says, If you follow all my guidelines and instructions, all my statutes, I will not put the same disease upon you that I put upon the Egyptians. So now they had a choice. They had a choice to live with these blessings, or they have a choice to live with these curses. And the choice was theirs. It was up to them. And today, folks, the choice is up to us. It's up to us. We have the opportunity to attempt to be obedient to our Creator's words. And we could see the blessings because it promises us in Scripture that if you do these things, all will be well with you. But if you do not, your land will be cursed. The food you eat will be cursed. The people around you and, and the house you live in and the clothes you wear and everything. There'll be curses attached to all these different things. Why do you think we're living in a world we are today with so many things going on so bad and so wrong. There's so much science out there, so many doctors out there, and there's still new diseases mentioned every single day. Where are the abundance of your blessings? You know, they're amongst the people that are keeping the guidelines and instructions. They're amongst the people that are sticking to the covenant they made and being obedient to the scriptures. And, and, and not all, but the majority of Christianity is being deceived away from this. And this is creating a, a tremendous issue. Do you, as a believer in Yeshua, the one they call Jesus, want all to be well with you? And when I say all to be well with you, I'm not just talking about here on an earthly level, because there are things that are going to happen that seem like, hey, all's not well with me. But you understand that the principle of Scripture is 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 not only letting people here know about Yeshua, but in our personal wellness, it's storing up the treasures up in heaven. And there might be people here that make more money than us. There might be people here that seem healthier than us. There might be people here that seem happier than us. But you know what? We have an eternal salvation. We have a place to go. And we should be the happiest, richest, well-off people out there knowing that. And when you could see a humble person who has so little physically here, but have so much joy in their heart, they know the end road. They know where they're going. The scriptures say the road is narrow and only few will find it, this righteous road. And, and this righteous road leads to a righteous gate. And that righteous gate is Yeshua, is Messiah. That's where the righteous gate is. But this road that is so narrow that only few find, that is Torah. That is keeping the guidelines and instructions of our Creator. Well, this poor commentary, in, in, well, well, it's actually a good commentary in this translation on 4.4 says, these decrees and regula regulations given to Moses at Mount Sinai were the foundation of the nation's civil, moral, and ceremonial laws because they apply to all generations. Excellent. But, 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 but this is still to be given today. We're still supposed to follow what we can today. So somebody would ask, well, of all the guidelines and instructions that were given today, and in the scriptures, they don't break it down to civil, moral, and, and, and sacrificial. No, they just say this is what to do and this is what not to do. So of all of those, as people that want to follow Yeshua, the one they call Jesus, that want to, to, to see the blessings, 
And we don't do it for the blessings. We do it because he told us to do it. But all of those that are doing this, uh, what are we to be doing today, actually? Is it just following the Ten Commandments? Is it not following the Ten Commandments? Is it two commandments? Is it more than ten? What are we exactly? Well, if you read the original covenant in, in the Torah, and you see, it tells, it gives you the exact list of what to do and what not to do. Now, we can't do all those things if they're not for us. So we are commanded by our Creator to receive the blessings and to consider ourselves obedient and righteous and not a sinner, a wicked sinner, is to do all that we have the capability of doing. You see, I am not a woman. I don't have the capability of fulfilling the commandments that are given for women. I am not a farmer. I don't have the capability of, of, of fulfilling commandments for farmers. But I am a man who considers myself a believer in Yeshua. And I certainly have the capability of following many of the guidelines and instructions. So we need to follow what we have the capability of following. Not what we want to follow. Not what we choose to follow. Not what the morality of this world that has sunken so deep below the scriptures say to follow but what the word says to follow and to keep. And when you look around and you get that list, and, 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 and the Ten Commandments are a great marker for it, at least a great marker for it, when you get that list, how come as a, a Christian or as a, a so-called believer, you're not doing all the things you're capable of doing? Who said the Fourth Commandment was done away with? They shall keep the Sabbath holy. Who said the Sabbath is no longer on Saturday, it's on Sunday? Who said uh, Easter, uh, this pagan ho uh, uh, holiday that's just as evil as Halloween, replaces uh, the, 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 the set appointed times of our wonderful Creator? Who said Christmas is the birthday, birthday uh, of, our, of our Messiah? All of these things are man-made things. The scriptures warn us against these things. They say, no, we need to stay away from, from the man-made doctrine. And we need to follow the ways of our wonderful creator. We just passed a, a very important time, which is the Feast of Trumpets. And it talks about uh, so many appointed times in scriptures. We have 10 days now, known as the Days of Ah, And then we're getting into Yom Kippur, the day of, of repentance and a day of reflection and a day of affliction. But most Christians don't even know this because they're not looking at the guidelines and instructions of our Creator. They're just looking forward to Halloween and, and Christmas. Pagan festivals and pagan holidays that go so much against what our Creator wants us to do and how our Creator wants us to live. We need to get right, folks. Go to your Bibles and read what it says about the appointed dimes and the calendar of our Creator versus what the average Christian is doing and the average Christian is saying. And the morale, here's the problem. The morality has dropped so far where you have not only the homosexuality, the abortion, the unclean foods, but if you just look at the average uh, Christian today or the majority of Christians today versus uh, back in, in the day in, in the first, second century or third century or movies of that at least, and, and you, you compare it to the idea of scripture of how we're even supposed to look. Forget about saying a word or doing anything. Of just how we're supposed to look. The, extra, the extremity that we go against our Creator's uh, guidelines and instructions. You see in the Bible, uh, shame and nakedness went hand in hand. Shame and nakedness went hand in hand. But today, the average Christian woman wear yoga pants, uh, which is skin-tight pants, and, and they'll show their cleavage in, 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 in the church, let alone out of the church. And some of them won't do it in the church because they don't feel comfortable doing it in church, but they'll do it out of the church. We see that the, 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 the enemy is just having his way with us as believers, and we need to do something about this. We need to repent, and we need to, we need to pray, and we need to ask him to change our heart so we don't do these things. Not just, see, when you read it in the scriptures and the Bible says it, it, it shouldn't. Be like, now we got to do it because it says it. We should have a deep sorrow in our heart to do these things. And so we know stealing is wrong. And we know there are consequences to stealing. You can't walk in a bank with a gun 
give me all your money, leave that bank, get caught, and expect not to have consequences. You go in there, if you were doing that, you'd be nervous because you know it's morally wrong. And if you happen to shoot somebody there because they got in your way, so you know that was morally wrong. So now you feel bad about it, and you get caught, and there are consequences. Why don't we think as Christians that there are serious consequences? And why don't we feel bad about doing things that the scriptures say not to do? Instead of making an excuse to, 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 that we could do it. For example, we'll bring up the fourth commandment again, breaking the Sabbath. Why don't we feel bad about that? Because according to the Bible, that's morally an abomination and wrong. Just as bad as, Christi- uh, uh, as homosexuality and just as bad as abortion. But because of the world today says, or Christianity today, or the church says, well, that's okay, you can do that one, but don't do this one. And as the church today is accepting homosexuality, <clears throat> it continues to, to, to go in the wrong direction, where one day people won't have any issue with accepting homosexuality in the church today, and, they'll start, and they're already starting to do it. Churches are accepting it, so people accept it. And then we run into this situation of the morality continuing to drop today. Well, if we go back to what the scriptures say and we look where our heart truly is, we should not only be in repentance for these things, but we should have a deep sorrow for these things. Our creator gave his son to die for us so we would see these things, so we'd realize these things. He gave us the Bible as a book of instructions, of a way to live. And he didn't say get rid of half of it or cut out three parts of it. He said, this is the treasure map. This is the book. This is the way that you are to follow. And we need to appreciate that. We need to be thankful for that. And uh, that's what I do here. And we're located in South Florida. Uh, my messages on my website are on TorahLifeMinistries.org. TorahLifeMinistries.org. Torah being the foundation of all scripture. And you can get on there and see bunches of messages like this. Every Friday night we have live fellowship over YouTube on the website. You just go to the top of that website where it says uh, Google Hangout Friday Nights. And you can go on there and you can be with us. And you could also uh, go under any message and, and type type uh, a comment or a question that I'll be happy to answer and get back to you uh, at uh, on the website. And if you're in South Florida, you can come in and join us at our fellowship locally. We meet uh, every Sabbath at 3 p.m. Uh, here in Lake Worth. And you could also contact me through the website phone number if you have any questions. But I'm just encouraging you as believers, as people that desire to be righteous, learn what righteousness is, repent, and accept Yeshua uh, as our Messiah, and, and truly desire to be washed clean from our from not just our wicked ways, but the desire to do wicked ways and understand what those wicked ways are. And, and our Creator promises us a more excellent way. And if you do those things, I promise you, He will show you and give you a more excellent way so all will be well with you. So thank you for listening this week, folks. Uh, Come on back next week, and you can hear us the same time wherever you hear us now. Until then, shalom, shalom. All right, everybody, there you go. That was this week's message. Remember, put your comments and questions below the video, and uh, please share this video with anyone you think that might uh, be blessed by it. Until then, everybody, have a great day, and shalom, shalom. Come out of the world, oh my people, seek the truth, avoid the evil, learn Yahweh's ways, Torah life ministries, come out of the world. Oh.